Hello everyone, I'm CJ Werleman. Don't forget to click the subscribe button below and please help keep our show going and growing by supporting my journalism at patreon.com slash CJ Werleman. Now let's get into it. Elon Musk's hostile takeover of the world's most popular political social media platform should deeply concern every Muslim because he has demonstrated nothing but disdain and contempt for adherents of the Islamic faith while also siding with those who wish to do them harm. I mean, we're talking about a guy who's totally okay with going to hell, which signals he's unconcerned with doing terrible things to his fellow man while he's still living on planet Earth. You see, Elon Musk has only one ideology, himself, and he will inflict any harm against anyone if it serves the best interests of Elon Musk, which is particularly bad news for persecuted Muslim populations everywhere. Earlier this year, Elon Musk opened a Tesla showroom in Xinjiang amidst China's ongoing genocide of Uyghur Muslims. He did this in January when he was already the world's richest man with a personal net worth exceeding $300 billion. In other words, opening a single showroom where a Muslim genocide is taking place would do little to nothing to add to Elon's staggering wealth. But he did so anyway, and despite warnings not to, which demonstrates just how little he cares about the lives of persecuted Muslims. Human rights groups have called for Tesla to change course after the company opened a new dealership in the Xinjiang region of China. Now, reports out of that province have revealed forced labor, mass detention in internment camps, and forced sterilization against Muslim minority Uyghurs. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. It gets a lot worse. In 2019, Elon visited Israel to explore Israeli culture and promote the future of his business ventures in the country. He even had breakfast with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to discuss new opportunities. After the meeting, Netanyahu praised Elon a genius, and Elon praised Israel a technological superpower. But anybody who praises Israel for anything is either a Zionist or a Zionist sympathizer. Given Israel is a criminal state, guilty of apartheid, theft, dispossession, and too many international law violations to count. But none of these realities matter to Elon, because he views Israel to be a business opportunity. And also because he's the direct beneficiary of apartheid, having grown up in white South Africa and inheriting his grandfather's ill-gotten wealth. This, of course, is bad news for Palestinians, who have had their Twitter accounts banned and blocked by Twitter at the request of the Israeli government. Last week, Elon suspended the account belonging to Palestinian news portal Palestine Online. There's just no way Elon will risk upsetting Israel by reinstating these accounts, given Israel represents a significant source of Twitter's advertising revenue and Tesla's car sales. And Tesla uh, has put an advertisement looking for a sales manager uh, to establish Tesla in Israel. I mean, Israelis are dying for Tesla. But Elon's partial ownership of Tesla is a far lesser concern than his almost total control of Twitter. Because his ownership of the world's largest political platform has been likened to a monkey holding a matchbox in a room full of dynamite. And one of the very first things Elon did when he took over Twitter was to fire its human rights team and undo long-standing efforts to moderate content, which has seen a deluge of racist anti-Muslim hate return to the platform. This is deeply alarming, given Muslims know firsthand how online hate speech leads to offline physical violence. The right-wing terrorist who murdered 52 Muslims at a mosque in Christchurch was radicalized by anti-Muslim conspiracy theories he found on social media platforms. And we should never forget the leading role Facebook played in inciting genocide against Rohingya Muslims in 2017. A recent study found that 42% of Muslims said they experienced online harassment, with 32% saying the harassment they experienced was severe. Well, in loosening content moderation rules, Elon Musk is making the online experience for Muslims even more perilous. Text messages sent from Elon to his business partners reveal his main motivation for buying the company was to allow racist right-wing trolls back onto the platform. So at the same time, Muslim minorities in Myanmar, India and Kashmir are already threatened with genocide from far-right ultra-nationalist forces, Elon is offering the perpetrators of this violence a home on Twitter. He has already reinstated the accounts of vicious Muslim-hating far-right figures, including Republican Congresswoman Marjorie Greene Taylor, who refers to Muslims as rapists and terrorists while demonizing them with hateful Islamophobic conspiracy theories. But when it comes to Muslim-hating far-right personalities, there's none bigger than Donald J. Trump, who has now had his Twitter account reinstated by Elon. 
there is a Muslim problem in the world. And I but you do believe overall there is a Muslim problem in the world? Well, there is a Muslim problem, absolutely. You just have to turn on your television set. I think Islam hates us. There's something, there's something there that there's a tremendous hatred there. Did you mean all 1.6 billion Muslims? I mean a lot of them. You look at what's happening with the Quran, uh, it's a pretty scary thing. If Trump comes back to power, it will be because of the support he receives from white Christian nationalists who wish to transform the country's secular democracy into a tyrannical Christian theocracy, a place where Muslims are either made second class citizens or are permanently expelled or even annihilated. And here's the thing, Elon was a member of President Trump's advisory panel, so at the very least he sympathizes with Trump's political views, while standing strongly against those who have established a lifelong legacy of standing up for the rights of Muslims and Palestinians, like Senator Bernie Sanders, who Elon routinely mocks on Twitter. But also revealing is that in 2017, Elon deleted a seat of tweets that were critical of Trump's Muslim immigration ban. The tweets had been sitting in his drafts folder, but he accidentally published them, before quickly realizing he had, and then deleting them, which says exactly what about Elon. It says that he's unconcerned about human rights abuses committed against Muslims. He cares only about maintaining access to political power, and he's willing to sacrifice whatever decent views he holds towards injustice if it serves him well. After all, we are talking about a guy who allows vicious racism to flourish at his companies. If you take the time to read the 39-page complaint filed on behalf of Tesla's black employees, you would be horrified. Tesla production associates and supervisors are accused of regularly calling employees the N-word. And when faced with complaints about the racist environment, some supervisors allegedly use their own racist language and retaliatory tactics. For Elon, profit and power comes first. We've seen this with his tacit support for a Muslim genocide in Xinjiang. And we'll soon see the same attitude directed towards Muslims in India and Kashmir. Given India is one of Twitter's largest sources of revenue, and given India has become a growing market for Tesla, which is why he lavished praise on the Indian government. He also views India's space program as an opportunity for his SpaceX company. Now, given India is the world's fifth largest economy, it's impossible to believe that Elon will do anything that threatens his access to this market. He has not reinstated accounts belonging to journalists who were banned by the Indian government for exposing anti-Muslim hate crimes in India, including mine. And it's even less likely he will do anything about the Indian government forcing Twitter to hire government agents who had access to sensitive user data. Despite his claims, Elon Musk is not a free speech absolutist. After all, his number one business partner at Twitter is the Saudi government, which owns a huge stake in the company. This is frightening given the Saudi regime is currently waging a war against Islamic scholars and activists, many of whom have been arrested and executed because of things they posted on Twitter. Ultimately, Elon Musk hates Muslims because he profits from standing alongside governments that do them harm, therefore proving once again that the Western capitalist system is geared in opposition to the Muslim world. This is what we must fight. This is why we produce the CJ Whirlman Show. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Whirlman. We can't produce, sustain, and grow the show without your help. We offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are, and stay blessed.